Hi all, let's have a look at game six of the World Chess Championship. So the story so far, five draws, some of them quite grueling. My favorite so far was game three, which I had the honor of commentating actually on the ICC with uh, multi-time US champion Larry Christensen. So game three is my favorite. Was this game going to be very exciting? Let's have a look or even mega exciting. Let's not go too far. It's a world championship match. E4, and we have classical symmetrical stuff. Magnus Colson sticks with E5. No Sicilian, I'm afraid. Knight F3, Knight C6. We do have the Spanish game now. So Sergei playing Bishop B5, the classic Roy Lopez or Spanish game. A6, Bishop A4, Knight F6. Nothing unusual so far, you might think, but Let's see, after rookie one, b5, bishop b3. Usually, players with black play d6 here. Uh, d6 is more common than castling. Castling indicates black might play the dreaded martial gambit. This is actually what was played instead of d6. So, yeah, Magnus maybe is trying to spice things up here. If white plays c3, then d5 might actually be on the cards. And I believe actually it's known that Michael Adams, who is a Marshall Gambit exponent, 2700 plus for, for many years, was one of uh, Magnus Colson's second. So I think the likelihood of Marshall Gambit uh, might be pretty high actually. Uh, but uh, we don't get that. We get this uh, C3 isn't played. It's, it's kind of the tradi traditional move. But there's various anti Marshall Gambit systems here, like A4 d3 uh, d4 even might be played but here we see the most common anti martial gambit system is actually just h3 just waiting with h3 it's different territory altogether and it looks as though you know black's still free to play d5 in one move kind of uh you know liberating the position um but actually he reserves this, and this is the most common idea. You don't play d5 here. It's very rarely played d5 uh, in this position. It's actually thought to give white uh, a small advantage, according to Lai, but like we're talking 20 games only with d5 immediately here. Usually by far over 1400 games, we have bishop b7 and 710 in live but with d6 so d5 is not played here and if you're interested just theoretically let's have a look white's taking that martial gambit pawn and it doesn't look at all like a martial gambit really does it because basically with h3 a lot of the dangers are kind of ruled out if black played bishop d6 so with this knight um you know if black played c6 let's have a look at this first d3 where, where are the dangers here it looks it looks like a a relative of martial gambit but actually you know white's uh fairly solid this doesn't seem to be too much exciting going on so d5 is not really played immediately usually it is actually it is actually bishop b7 here against this h3 and now white uh you might think there might be an interest in knight c3 to stop d5 that that would seem a possibility that's actually really rarely played as well here usually it's the move played which is d3 uh in this position d3 is usually the move played uh if knight c3 just to, to show you this um black pro probably actually there's there's been a few games with d6 black probably just goes d6 and it's no big deal uh but anyway no d5 in effect was was permitted uh here because it is it is like a gambit i mean white should be solid enough here he hasn't done anything fundamentally wrong d5 is a relative of the martial gambit energetic and usually d6 is actually uh the move played here but this is being played over 200 times d5 d6 we're talking over 900 times yeah so a little bit of a risk you might think let's have a look so e takes knight takes so this is another kind of 
related idea to the Marshall gamut in, in terms of losing a pawn on e5, gamuting a pawn on e5. Now here, it's it's not a good idea, I believe, to take on e5. Although I might be wrong, it's actually fairly evenly distributed. Knight d4. Sorry, it's actually evenly distributed. Knight, knight d4 or knight takes e5, fairly evenly distributed. Both moves have a reasonably good reputation actually so either knight d4 or knight takes e5 knight d4 was played here which opens up the bishop gives the possibility of knight takes b3 why well, doesn't have why well, it's not going to be playing a4 in a hurry because of knight takes b3 this bishop can be taken out at any time this bishop's going to go from the position uh just if we have a quick look at knight takes e5 this is a popular alternative which has some great wins for black i'll just show you an example continuation rook takes queen here rookie one rook here knight d2 c5 this has all been seen before this kind of thing trying to use that bishop for a battery on g2 and there's been at least three interesting wins with black here van kampen against hebden 2012 abdomalik against sashdev 2014 and craig sander against roman niski in 2012 yeah it's a, it's a reasonably good position with some attacking prospects so maybe we'll see this continuation in a different game in this match i know this is a short match but knight takes e5 you never know it might spring up in another game later but for, for the moment knight d4 this is more positionally orientated uh it's n although there are some dangers still on g2 lurking because of this active bishop uh we have knight c3 challenging uh that knight on d5 now knight b4 which is the most common move but there are not too many stem games here. Now we have this move bishop f4, which is like breaking this rule of a loose piece, actually. It is a loose piece. And there might be more conservative moves, which are interesting as well. Um, actually, let's, let's add a bit. So I, I, I have prepared some analysis for this game, but let's have a look at this position in particular. Knight e4 is, is mentioned as an, a sort of try for an advantage actually if we have this position oh i'll just stop that for a moment okay this position here mm, it doesn't seem like much <laughs> really it seems only a small advantage so night 94 i'm not sure why it's pretending to do anything that active basically so we have bishop f4 okay bishop f4 now knight takes b3 yes yeah, simplification so black's got the bishop pair good compensation with the bishop pair and especially this bishop on b7 c5 keeps a grip on that d4 square now knight e4 is played here there's no particularly major uh, threat it would seem although although the queen is free to come to h5 here but this, I believe this is still in Magnus Colson's preparation. He immediately kicks one of these knights before some maybe dangers are emerging here. Because, yeah, potentially this pawn could be sacked for queen h5. Um, yeah, let's have a quick look, actually. Let's have a quick look. If black plays a routine move like rook c8. Mm, yeah, maybe c3 actually is preferred because the knight is supporting d3 so this can be kicked no <laughs> i don't think there's any dream of an attack here i don't think this this kind of works there's no there's no attack okay i'm trying to make this game more exciting <laughs> by looking at fancy variations unfortunately there's no fancy variation of a hack attack here just for the record with rook c8 so anyway f6 this is part of preparation it was played quickly apparently knight f3 f5 another forcing move knight eg5 and it looks a bit strange to be encouraging knight e6 but uh black knows what he's doing bishop takes now this is a little trap i mean <laughs> if if um bishop takes this is bad because a bishop takes f3 and black would be better here uh you know queen takes loses the piece queen c1 might be the only move but black's clearly doing fantastically well here he shouldn't be doing this well yeah no this this shouldn't happen no this this is not possible i mean there's also sorry there's also some other tricks here by the way in this in this position 
on knight g3 also bishop takes f3 shows the power of this knight on b b4 hitting c2 that annoying pressure yeah that'd be a disaster as well so white's got to be careful knight eg5 is plausible also knight d2 is plausible that's solid enough against this bishop f3 and knight c2 stuff but uh knight, knight g5 is is plausible and looks more adventurous as though e6 is a major concern which it actually it probably isn't here black takes on g5 first so he's kind of giving up his dark square bishop but look that bishop's extended in scope and now kicking here so again this mechanism of knight f3 and knight c2 kicks in uh now it looks as though knight e6 is a threat right but there's a counter threat just made queen d5 if we just have a look at this position knight f3 I believe just allows bishop takes f3 here this this oh bishop takes f3 here <laughs> is is good for black it's going to be good for black because of this c2 mechanism yeah if white has to play that's terribly terribly bad pawn structure no and otherwise yeah the knight takes c2 so yeah this is preparation to allow this seemingly aggressive position but queen d5 threatens mate so black's not losing any material or anything uh, we have f3 and now white has to be careful here after rook fe8 this this is this is potentially nasty uh he plays a good forcing with rook e5 uh believe it or not <laughs> there's there's an intriguing possibility it looks dumb to allow check and queen takes f4 but this is actually it seems technically possible because check something crazy about this is knight takes this position here uh, so you see that if bishop takes, then we have check there. If knight takes, forking queen and rook. This is a crazy line. Queen e7, knight takes a1. Queen takes b7. This position is about equal. Yeah, I know it's crazy. That there's these crazy lines with where knight c7 is is actually technically uh, possible here. It seems. What white doesn't want to do is play queen e2 it loses to just king f7 simply or bishop c8 where that pin is is pretty nasty uh here for example knight c7 we just take on e2 and then take on e1 check and then piece up thanks very much okay so um yeah rook e5 precise move there's no check at the moment because the knight's holding d4 okay now white has time to counter-attack black's pesky knight on d3 uh sorry with c3 uh queen e2 is there tactics you might think rook takes e6 for queen takes f4 but here's c3 this position uh is actually believe it or not technically equal even though this, we've got this imbalanced rook against knight bishop but yeah it's a bit of a mess uh no we don't need to play that's that's it uh, it's not that interesting it's an alternative so c c3 is is the move played and it is tempting like taking on d3 yeah this would be a mistake i think for black black instead plays rook takes e6 so Magnus Carlsen plays rook takes e6. If knight takes d3, there's actually rook takes c5 here, hitting the queen. Queen takes, because the knight's protecting the rook, yeah. Queen takes d3. This position is actually, uh, if anyone's better, it's going to be white, but it is opposite color bishop, so. Okay, so anyway, rook takes e6 was simply played. Rook takes. And then we have more simplification rook c1 if white got in d4 bishop e5 and rook c7 if he had three moves here it, you know this could be scary for black's king but unfortunately well for the spectators magnus played rook c8 so nothing too dramatic at the moment rook takes c8 queen takes c8 now queen e1 believe it or not has two features to it not just queen takes b4 but also queen e7 for bishop e5 so we have here queen d7 uh, ruling out queen e7 and hitting d3 yeah queen d7 um so not 
you know protecting with a5 because then that might be like some trouble ahead you know with queen e7 um for, as an example so we have uh queen e1 we have queen d7 much more solid just counter-attacking this pawn on d3 so, you know black has to be careful if the queen's out here then it's safe to do that because uh that's safe enough um we have now trying to you know provoke an infiltrate trying to get an infiltration with the queen this move king h2 as if you know, saying to black you know take this pawn and i'll i've got some a couple moves i could check it's sort of just queen takes b4 uh, <clears throat> but uh black just protects the pawn now if he plays queen takes d3 then this this might be a little bit of a dramatic turn actually because of queen e8 this is a little bit better than queen e7 technically because here bishop e5 and now there's actually some dangers for black but f4 sorry queen d5 this position queen g8 and there's also another intriguing line if i can find it <laughs> sorry okay after this check here bishop e5 straight away now here uh oh sorry f4 is is strong f4 is strong because it actually secures a perpetual check scenario even if black loses the bishop example queen f7 hitting g7 and b7 looks scary right queen g6 but we've got a perpetual check so yeah the, i mean there are resources for black to hold even in this invasion scenario uh where black did take on d3 but why why take that risk of taking on d3 when simply the b4 pawn can be protected why, why have these invasion points uh so i think e8 is stronger by the way just just for those interested theoretically uh if after king h2 queen takes queen e7 is inferior actually to queen e8 because this position is nothing to write home about yeah blacks should be absolutely fine there uh so yeah but anyway a5 just secures things and keeps any infiltration uh queen moves away out of sight queen e3 protecting the pawn on d3 hitting b3 but yeah this queen e3 is good because it can counter attack against this with queen b6 so things are kept in balance masterfully by both sides and here after bishop e6 a draw is agreed if queen if queen e7 queen d7 holding things if bishop e5 then queen d7 so it's pretty solid here uh so they agreed to draw uh in this position um yeah okay it's it looks like another draw <laughs> it's another draw yes yes yeah, six draws in a row now um but you know black did try and play a gambit you know let's let's give credit to our world chess champion he did try and spice things up it's not his fault that h3 was played i mean sergey could have played c3 and we could have had a martial gambit you know maybe that's a treat in store for a future game but we're running out of games that's the thing now we're halfway through this match but you know there's excitement behind the scenes in the variations you just got to be there and you got to got to know the excitement that was lurking here it's just because both sides are shutting down each other's opportunities that we it's the end result it doesn't seem as though this is exciting but it's, it's the content behind the scenes which is which is sometimes more exciting in this in this sort of game so comments questions likes appreciated thanks very much